Welcome. This is Majesty Sussex Report. I'm Antonio. Thank you for spending some of your valuable time with us. It's an absolute pleasure and honor to have you here. Thank you. Many of you might know by now that a grippling Euro 2024 ended on Sunday with Spain crowned champions for a record fourth time with goals from Nico Williams and Mikel Oyarzabal. Enough to give them a 2-1 lead over England. As sports commentators give their insights on the game, Social media was busy doing what social media does best. Racist images and remarks began to surface from the UK fans with a disgusting image of Saka's face as an ape. So original of them. This past week, our own VS Speaks Royally shared on her podcast that a young man yelled the N-word at her. Today's episode, I'll be looking at the beautiful game and the persistence of racism. Welcome once again. Football, or as in North America they may call it soccer, a sport celebrated for its ability to unite people across borders, still grapples with an insidious problem, racism. Despite efforts from governing bodies and communities, the beautiful game is marred by the ugliness of racial bias. I will try my very best to delve into the ongoing racism in football, examining the mental toll on players and inadequate responses from authorities and the troubling parallel with the treatment of the Duchess of Sussex, Meghan Markle. The recent European Championship brought to light both the progress and persistent challenges in addressing racism in football. Spain star player Nico Williams and Lamine Yamal, both second generation immigrants, symbolize the evolving face of European football. However, their presence also underscores the fragile nature of this progress. Bukayo Saka, Jordan Sancho, and Marcus. Rashford faced vile racist abuse after missing penalties in Euro 2020 final. The backlash they endured highlights a distressing reality. Black players are often scapegoated for their team's failures. This pattern was not new. It mirrored the experiences of Sean Wright Phillips who faced racist chants from Spanish fans nearly two decades earlier. The mental health implications for players subjected to such abuse are profound. Imagine the stress of not only performing at the highest level, but also bearing the blunt of societal prejudice. Saka's resilience in returning to the pitch, despite the hate he received, is a testament to his mental fortitude. Yet, the emotional scars of such experiences run deep. Former England defender Rio Ferdinand pointedly asked, where are the racists now? After Saka's triumphant performances in subsequent matches. His question highlights the temporary and superficial nature of public support. 
which often fades until the next incident. Despite efforts from organizations like the FA, the UEFA, and FIFA to combat racism, their actions often fall short. The policing of social media, where much of the abuse occurs, remains inadequate. Although there have been arrests and convictions, as in the case of the forklift driver jailed for abuse in Saka, Rashford, and Sancho after Euro 2020. These measures are reactive rather than preventative. Police efforts to reassure players and take action against offenders have improved, but the root of the problem remains unaddressed. The systemic nature of racism in football requires more than just penalizing individuals. It demands a cultural shift within the sport and society. The media's role, huh, I'm sure you guessed this, the media's role in perpetrating racism cannot be ignored. Sensationalist headlines and biased reporting contribute to the villainization of black players. For instance, the media portrayal of Saka after England's friendly loss to Iceland with headlines like Black Ice illustrates how journalists can unwittingly or deliberately, I think it's the latter, allegedly, fan the flames of racial prejudice. Social media platforms, despite their pledge, often fail to act swiftly against racist content. They're always promising. Promise this, promise that, promise. It's too much money. Meta, the owner of Facebook and Instagram and so on, guidelines against hate speech seem insufficient when harmful stereotypes and dehumanizing comparisons continue to surface. The slow response to racist emojis and slurs on Instagram after Euro 2024 reflects this ongoing struggle. The audacity of fans who spew racist abuse like with, 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 with very little fear of repercussions is alarming. This behavior is bolstered by the per, per, perceived and an, 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 um, anonymity of social media and the inadequate penalties for offenders. The slap on the risk approach by some governing bodies only emboldens the so-called fans. The racist treatment of the Duchess of Sussex, Meghan Markle by the British media, draws disturbing parallels to the abuse faced by black football players. Jeremy Clarkson vitriolic article in The Sun and the infamous chimpanzee image following Prince Archie's birth are stark reminders of how entrenched racism is in the UK. These incidents, like those in football, were met with outrage, but little substantive change. The media's complicity in these attacks and the lack of accountability mirrors the issues in football. Both domains reflect a society that has yet to fully reckon with its racial prejudices. The prevalence of racism in the UK, both in football and society, can be attributed to several factors. The historical context, the UK colonial past and subsequent immigration patterns 
have created a complex racial dynamic that continues to influence societal attitudes. Media influence. The British tabloid culture strives on sensationalism, often at the expense of minority groups. Inadequate education. A lack of comprehensive education on racism and its impacts perpetuates ignorance and prejudice. Institutional failures. Both in football and beyond, institutions have been slow to implement meaningful changes and enforce anti-racism policies effectively. While some might argue that racism no longer exists in the UK or Spain or France, the reality tells a different story. Racism is often subtle and systemic, manifesting in ways that might not always be immediately visible. Recent examples from football highlights the persistence of this issue. Players like Bukayo Saka, Nico Williams, and Marcos Rashford have faced adherent racist abuse, both online and in stadiums. Moreover, institutional racism is reflected in media's betrayal and societal attitudes. For instance, the British media treatment of Meghan Markle and the infamous chimpanzee photo incident following Prince Archie's birth are stark reminders of underlying prejudices. Racism existence isn't negated by the success or opinions of some individuals from minority groups. It's crucial to acknowledge and address these issues openly rather than dismissing them based on selective experiences. You know, because many times they love to have someone of color or a black person or minority who will be on any given show, any given social media will write an article saying they've always lived here, they were born here, and I'm a colored person. I've never experienced racism. I don't know what that is. Ignoring the problem only perpetuates the cycle of discrimination and inequality. We must strive for a society where equality is more than just a concept, but a lived reality for everyone. Now, let me give you some brief examples here. Bukaya Saka, Marcos Radford, and Jordan Sancho, after Euro 2020, after missing the penalties in the Euro 2020 final against Italy. These three players were subjected to a torrent of racist abuse on social media. Despite widespread condemnation and some arrest, the incident highlighted the persistent and the persistence of racism within football, and society at large. Vinicius Jr. Real Madrid Brazilian striker Vinicius Jr. faced regular racist abuse from rival fans in Spain. One notable incident occurred when he broke down, broke down in tears doing a press call. Oh. <sighs> Broke down in tears during a press conf conference after, af after discussing the hate he received. Despite some actions taken, including the imprisonment of fans for racial insults, the problem remains deeply entrenched. During a match in Spain, Sean Wright Phillips and 
England International endured racist chants from around 40,000 Spanish fans every time he touched the ball. This incident occurred nearly two decades ago, but is a reminder of the long standing issue of racism in football that still persists to this freaking day. These examples demonstrate that, the, that despite ongoing efforts to combat racism, black players continue to face significant challenges and abuse, reflecting a broader issue in society. Racism in football is a microcosm of a broader societal issue. The mental toll on players, the inadequate responses from governing bodies, and the complicity of the media and social media platforms reveal the depth of this problem. Drawn parallels to the treatment of the Duchess of Sussex underscores the pervasiveness of racial prejudice in the UK. To truly address these issues, a concerted effort from all sectors of society is required. Only then can football and society begin to reflect the idea deals of fairness and equality it professes to uphold it's actually never coming home and i'm quite glad it's never coming flipping home you see english people don't deserve anything because of the blatant racism that comes out every few years I made a video about three years ago comparing the UK's racism to the US's racism. And to be quite frank, UK are the most disgusting and vile Adan people on planet Earth. How are you telling me you've gone on to make a photograph of a black person and made him look like an ape? You lot are disgusting. You sat down, you probably had it ready before the match even started and knew exactly what you were doing. England don't deserve anything and I hope and I pray to God England never wins anything because you lot are disgusting. And I hope everyone that looks similar to me never play for these European countries. Because when you do and you don't follow through and give them the win, this is what they do. And they did it, and they did it three years ago and they did it this year and they're going to do it whenever again. England will never win. It's never coming. Up. Didn't come home in 2018. Didn't come home in 2021. Didn't come home in 2022. And didn't come home in 2024. I know you lot are upset because you're going to work tomorrow. But I hope you enjoy the ugly British weather as well.
As we navigate these challenging times, the world seems to be at a crossroads. A convicted felon is once again vying for the presidency of the United States, representing a political force that often strokes division and hatred. Amber Rose, who gained her fame and fortune within the black community, now seems to publicly be identifying as white and supports this same divisive figure. This shift reflects a broader trend where the far right is convincing many that they are the right choice, preying on the fears and uncertainties of those who have never experienced the true horrors of far right regimes. In the midst of this turmoil, sports, particularly football, or soccer should serve as a unifying force. Yet the beautiful game is increasingly tainted by the rise of unchecked racism. Players like Okuyo Saka, Marcos Bradford, and Vinicius Jr. continue to face vile abuse, highlighting how deeply ingrained these issues are within our society. It is easy to feel disheartened when money and power seems to overshadow the core values of fairness and unity that sports and indeed our societies should uphold. <laughs> but now, more than ever, we must hold on to hope. We must commit to doing good to supporting one another and to speaking out against injustice in all its forms. By standing together, we can work towards a world where everyone is valued and respected both on and off the pitch, any pitch. In these uncertain times, oh boy. Let us be the change we wish to see. Let us support our players, whomever they may be, our neighbors and our communities with unwavering empathy and integrity. The road ahead may be long, but together, I believe this, that together, we can create a brighter, more inclusive future for all, for all of us. Let's not lose hope. Let's not let them win. I thank you. Thank you for spending your valuable time with us here. And please be kind to yourself. Be kind to your loved ones and to those strangers that you will meet <laughs> on your path. Be kind to them. <sighs> With much love, until we speak again. <laughs>